Hey everybody, I'll give you a little story of a computer we've been working on today here that's kind of interesting, maybe it helps somebody out out there. Uh, so this is a Corsair build. It's got a Ryzen 7, well, you got it right there. You got a Ryzen 7, where are we at? 3.6. Ryzen 7 3700 boots to the BIOS the main issue when it came in was the customer said he was getting some blue he got a blue screen or it was blue screening so then he went to just reinstall the operating system and it would fail so he couldn't reinstall the operating system brought it in and I mean we took it in as yeah just reinstall the operating system maybe he was doing something wrong maybe he's got uh, some problem with a hard drive or RAM or you know something like that the unit was booting uh, when it boots up it was showing uh, no no drive present so we just you know took it in as a regular OS install with a quick diagnostic so we uh, went to boot it up with our OS I don't think we have it here we're kind of done so we went to boot to our operating system and what it would do is it would go into uh, into a uh, boot repair as in you know Windows failed to uh, boot and uh, yeah, a boot repair. So we try. It did that a couple of times. I said, "Well, maybe we got a bad drive." Right, one of our drives. So we probably, yeah, we probably use one. Actually, these are the two that we tried. So we tried that one first. Boot repair. You know, Windows is repairing the drive, but it it wouldn't even get to the end of that. It would just fail. So we would just, you know, discard that as maybe it got corrupt or something. Try another one same thing so that was a little odd so we just we said you know let's just go right down to hardware so we said you know let's go right to uh, we, we had disconnected all the other drives we said let's just go to the RAM so we're using a mem test on a UEFI right there so mem test booted that up immediately gave us errors so we said we're good to go it's got you know a bad RAM it's got two so when you run it with both on there, you don't know which one of the two. So then you got to take one out to test each one individually. So we test them individually, both bad. Wow, it's a little odd. I mean, they could both go bad at the same time, but I mean, that wouldn't be something too common. So I said, okay, let's, uh, let's try one of our RAM. We had some RAM here, 2400, a little bit different speed, but you know, it should have been compatible. Put one of our RAM on there. Failed as well. So he said, wait, wait, something's uh, something's going on. Uh, pretty strange here as far as this failing as well. So we uh, from there we went to just try the different sockets. Since we were using one RAM, we were putting in socket number two. Uh, we said, well, let's try a different socket. We tried four. Everywhere it was failing. Okay, so we're thinking, you know, maybe the motherboard has a problem or the socket has a problem. Let's get the RAM and test it on another computer. So I have another computer here, that little corner back there. So that little guy back there with no case and no nothing. That one is, yeah, an AMD is uh, Ryzen 3, 3200, something like that. Just a little computer that we use for all these uh, good stuff. Put the RAM on there, tested it. RAM tested good. You got me now. So we're thinking, yeah, bad motherboard, I guess. But we went a little further. We said, you know, you got a motherboard and you got a CPU. Could it be the motherboard or the CPU? We're thinking more motherboard because we're getting a post. And this is where, I mean, the, the, the point of why I decided to make the video is if you're getting post to this level here, you're getting Windows starting up telling you, you know, a boot error, uh, you know, going into recovery mode. You wouldn't tend to think if you had a bad CPU. How do you get this far with a bad CPU? Interesting. So the only way to really test the CPU is to put it on another computer. So yeah, this was a long diagnostic that was uh, more than what we bargained for, but we were already on the horse. So, you know, once you're on the horse, you might as well just keep riding it. So, sometimes maybe not. Sometimes it's probably better to just get the heck off. 
Uh, so we didn't get off the horse. We took the CPU out, swapped it over to our little guy over there, and it failed over there. So that's how we got, you know, to the bottom of it. So, you know, no, no CPU tester. You know, your CPU tester is just another board. Now, granted, if you're a home gamer, home user, home tech, you might not have all these tools. And that's why some of these rigs, you know, I mean, these are people that probably built these computers themselves. But when it gets down to this type of problem, you got to have extra RAM. You, do you have another computer to put the CPU on? Uh, you know, another board? You know, are they familiar with these RAM tests? Frankly, they're not. I mean, I talk to techs all the time and I ask them how they check RAM. They just, oh, I don't know, I put it in and if it works, it's good. I mean, that's not good enough. As a matter, you know, this is the perfect example. It's probably the only example that I see that a CPU is bad, but the unit post and we get all the way over here. So that's kind of the example too with RAM. You know, RAM could, your computer could post and do all that and run for 30 minutes and still have a bad RAM. So uh, the summary of the story is you gotta go, you know, all the way to really verify it, especially once you get to this motherboard slash CPU area, you have to test that CPU on another board and vice versa. Because this unit, as you can see, it posts completely right there. And actually, you know, MemTest even starts and then gets stuck. I mean, it leads us, we were like almost, I mean, the, we're pretty much going to just tell them, look, you got bad, bad RAM, but, and that's where somebody would have probably left it. But at PC911, right, we go all the way. So that's what's going on there. That's gonna answer the question. Could a CPU, could a bad CPU post and still be bad? Provide power, provide fan power, all this, lights, no error codes. Are we getting in there? Well, this board doesn't have any error code lights, no. GPU, working, but you can't boot to an operating system and you can't even run a mem test which is in DOS so yes you could have a bad CPU and get post you got to check it all the way to the end and that's what's going on today at PC 911